there beautiful friends, it's Tamara Portier from Willowing Arts. Welcome to my video today. Um, this is a really sort of a part two to a, a previous video I did called All About Art Journals. Today is also all about art journals and um, I just wanted to talk a little bit more and further about working in different sizes. So it doesn't matter if you haven't seen the previous video, but if you did want to see it, just click um, here or maybe here. I'm not sure where I'm going to put a link. Either way, you'll see it pop up somewhere on the screen. Click, have that, have it maybe a little watch first. It's quite long, it's about 40 minutes, I think. Um, but it's not necessary to, to watch that video before you watch this video, because this one is fun all by itself. Yes, yes, that's how I do it. That's how I work, you know? So, um, I just wanted to talk to, to you guys today a little bit about working in your art journal, but in considering working in different sizes and how that um, can help you um, with your creative process, I suppose, and also set yourself ch interesting challenges and see what that does for you. So um, if you follow my work, you might know that I'm a avid art, journaling, art journaler, do a lot of art journaling, and um, I work in a variety of different art journals. So over the years, I um, actually I've been probably art journaling for about 11, 12 years now, and uh, I just um, have been working. I've been working in 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 a wide variety in different kinds of journals uh, or sketchbooks, if you however you want to call them. Again, refer back to the other um, video where I go through <clears throat> all the journals I've worked with in quite a lot of detail, and I talk about paper and different kinds of paper and that kind of stuff. So today I just wanted to talk about different kinds of sizes and and how I've been feeling about working in these different kinds of sizes. So I might actually um, set the camera up a little bit differently in a moment when I show you those three different sizes. Actually there's four sizes that I've worked in, but never mind. Um, but before I do that let me just show you the ones that I've got here and have a, a quick intro to these journals. One sec. Okay, can't find that tiny mini one. Um, anyway, I show you that one in the other video as well, but never mind, it's not uh, really relevant. Um, <clears throat> so it's sort of the most common sizes that are out there are um, the, the, the moleskin size is kind of what the Europeans might refer to as A5. It's kind of like a, um, a sketchbook. Um, of course, all of them are sketchbooks, sorry. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a nicely small size you can put in your bag, go outside, be on the train or the bus or whatever, sketch in sketch in, in your book, do, use a little bit of watercolor or whatever. And it's, it's, a, it's a really nice size for that sort of reason. So A5 or... What is that? Nine by seven inches or something. That's one fairly common size. And then another one that is out there for probably art students or in schools are just this, this, this sort of normal A4 size, which is sort of similar to European printer paper, nine by twelve, that kind of size. Um, and these are also not. These are less. These are <laughs> uh, more cumbersome to sort of just. Push in your, put in your bag and take outside. But people, I think, still might uh, do that. And I can talk about these sizes in a second, a little bit more. And then the the the, the book that I've been working in <coughs> recently, and I also refer to my other video, is this size. It's about 16 by 12. And I've come to really enjoy working big. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you guys about why I like working big and uh, encourage you guys to perhaps find a book like this. Um, and I know I'm <laughs> probably teasing and frustrating many of you because I have mentioned both these books before and people ask me, where do you buy it, where do you buy it? And I just buy it in my local art store and I can't seem to figure out <clears throat> which brand this is and where you can might buy it online. Although my friend Iris and I were discussing this in great depth the other day and we seem to have figured out where it might be available. So I'm gonna put some links down there, down here, so that you guys can have a search because that's the difficulty. Uh, it's, it's just seems, it just sort of seems brandless <laughs> to my great frustration because obviously I want to let you guys know where you can find this thing. Uh, but in, either, either way, it doesn't need to be this brand and it doesn't need to be this paper. My point today is to talk about size. So I'm gonna just uh, go sit at my desk and talk to you a little bit more about these um, journals and then I will show you a fast forward of a create a, two, a, a spread that I've a spread that I've created in this book actually this page this this spread 
that that you can after at the end of this video you'll see her me creating this spread okay <coughs> hope you enjoy this video and if you enjoy uh what you see here today just so you know i run many many art classes including uh, a, a year-long course called lifebook that you might want to check out on willowing.org from there you can find all my other links and things okay guys enjoy the rest of the video and i'll see you again some other time Mwah. much love hello again oh so um so i just wanted to give you guys a little uh peek into these journals and talk about these different sizes um i won't go into major depth on paper again if you wanted to hear my thoughts on paper uh more then do refer to the other video that i've already linked a couple of times um about my comment on it anyway so this is the the little moleskin five uh, a five size and I have many of these. I have about seven or eight, maybe even more, probably over the years. Some of them have been filled up completely. Some of them have only got up until there. And the the moleskins, I will comment on the moleskin, excuse me, the moleskina, skinny, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it. Um, I will refer, uh, comment on the paper. I think why I've moved away from moleskin i even have a, a large moleskin like this actually is because they don't the paper isn't as uh thick and sturdy as i need it to be for the work i do the work i like doing which is heavy wet heavy wet work heavy collage or heavy on all the mediums and so though i do like the moleskin a lot um and sometimes I would gesso the page to, for to to fortify it. That works as well. But then again, you get a different type of um, surface. And I, my favorite paper surface is uh, hot pressed 140 LB. So that's my favorite and then a specific brand as well. Anywho, I just thought I'd show you um, the, the, the pages here. So so why I do like working in, okay, smaller smaller um, journals is it gives a level of or number one I find it more challenging because you have you obviously have to work in a more smaller piddly fiddly type way so it gives me that challenge um, so it, it, it sort of gives me a challenge to to make something that I like the look of in a in a while it's it's more difficult to do because I don't have that much space what I like though is that it gives me more intimacy with myself almost and with the journal so on the smaller pages yeah there's there's just not not very there's not a, sort of like a like a very far to go therefore i find smaller pages more almost of a direct connection to myself okay like i'm going to a little bit deeper on the what what does our journaling mean to me what i do i do with it um, but anyway, I like that about the smaller pages. And of course, what is nice about these type of pages as well is you can do them more quickly. So you won't need to spend ages on a, on a page to have maybe a satisfying outcome if that's what you're going for or, or feel that you've maybe finished or you've processed something to an end. Yeah. So if you're like working a lot larger, you you it takes maybe if you wanted to basically feel like you're coming to a closing point with your journaling it takes longer but with the littler ones it doesn't take long so these are cool to take on buses and and uh, trains and sometimes you can like here i've all i've used is i only um have used graphite with a little bit of paint and this is sketchy drawing that kind of stuff so um so that's what I like about using smaller sketch anyway, Intimacy, being able to more quickly come to a closing point with you and your journal. Because to me, journaling is about conversations with myself. Conversations with my the deeper aspects of myself and putting them onto the page. And having a an interaction with my inner word, world externalized. Okay, I should do a video on that, shouldn't I? Why do I have a journal? <laughs> I'm suddenly thinking, hmm, I should could be good to talk about. Anyway, so that's what I do really like about doing, uh, using like smaller sketchbooks. However, the thing that I find frustrating about the smaller ones is that I actually feel quite cramped in. So there's, <laughs> there's two sides to every coin, right? So I also feel quite cramped in here and there. Uh, yeah, so I suppose it depends on my mood and if I want something to be, be going a bit more quickly. So this is just an example of the littlest version. I have another little, little, little uh, moleskin. I can't find it right now. I only use it for quick sketching on the bus. Now I'm no longer on the bus anymore. Oh, 
Oh yeah, it sounds wrong with that. So here we have an A4 size 9 by 12 uh, journal and okay I'll just straight away say that these two are clearly the same and now what does Iris say? So Iris thinks I buy these in my local art store. According to my to this art store they say that the paper is Waterford and Saunders but the brand itself of the book or the people who make the book are not Waterford and Saunders which is which is what I thought was the case. I thought they were a company that also bind these books, but in fact the paper is Waterford and Saunders. The book itself, so we seem to think, uh, send me an image of it, uh, Roberson, R-O-B-E-R-S-O-N, and you need to look for watercolor sketchbook. So I'll put that, I'll put the, the name of that under here. Um, and there's a company in London that seems to be binding them. But if you search on that, you might find this these books. And they have them in with a blue, blue binding, a red binding, and a green binding. The green binding refers to hot pressed watercolor paper. The paper is the, the hot pressed. Blue, I think, is in between satin, whatever. And red is coarse. What is it? Uh, cold pressed. But my preferred is always hot hot pressed. I prefer that over the grainier stuff. Cool. So. I think that is the actual brand, although I started to have a quick look and I still couldn't really, I wasn't sure what I was finding. I don't know, it seems to be a really elusive brand. So if you're really wanting a book like it, I actually suggest you make your own. I mean, my best journal, if you, uh, I, I show you that in my other video as well, my, the, be the best journal I've ever had was one that I made myself with my chosen favourite paper. Coptic binding or making your own journal is number one, very satisfying. Number two, not that difficult. It's not like you think, God, that's going to take me weeks. Usually just a couple of hours or an evening and you've got a wonderful journal and so you have both the, the satisfaction of may, having made your own journal and of uh, um, and having the perfect journal because you've chosen the exact paper you like. You can even mix it up. You know, it's perfect. Anyway, so if you can't find this one, don't fret and send me send many, many emails, <laughs> which is what happened last time. I do understand that. But I can't, for, somehow can't find where to, just an easy, quick size, you know. Anyway, um, anyway, so back to sizes. Here we go. So this is an A4 size and already I feel a lot less cramped and claustrophobic when I'm in a book like this. This is one of my most recent uh, larger sketchbooks. And I'll just go through it. And these, uh, these pages, I may have shown this in the other video as well, but I'll show them again. These pages are made on a workshop with Erin Faith Ellen of Call, Call of the Wild Soul, who runs retreats in the UK and in the States. This I was on a retreat in Ireland, but I didn't have so many supplies with me. Anyway, what I like about a size like this is you get more space. I don't know, you can go further out, yet there's also a level of intimacy. I mean, I think this is still kind of... This size is quite perfect from the perspective of you get a nice um, an in-between kind of um, compromise, right? Sort of, you get, and that slightly wider, slightly more space, slightly further you can go, you can do things and there's options, but you don't, and you, but you also have a level of intimacy still. Plus, it won't take you too long, it won't take you, it, it's not so small that it takes you, that you're really done really quickly. So, it's a nice compromise. I like working this size a lot. Um, this just, you know, you can go so many ways and there's a nice space and also particularly if you're doing faces, you're not having to kind of work very, very small. You can have, you can do a fairly substantial face, large-ish, and, and work on details. So the larger you work, the more opportunity there is for smaller and really fine detail, which is what I enjoy doing as well. Um, so that's the sort of positive thing about when you start to work larger. Okay, I'm just gonna slowly uh, do a little flip through of this journal. This is not something I like. This is a bit too crazy for me. Anyway, I have comments on all these pages, but this is, I know people like having a quick look in. I don't like this face at all. I like her a lot. <laughs> this face I like. Uh, this I like as well. And here I started to um, do some color mixing and explaining things on a lesson of mine. Here's some just these old quick doodly things. And I ended up going and trying to. I feel really sad that I did this, but I'm going to go over because this is a nice journal. I want to keep it as a journal rather than a sketchbook or 
demonstration demonstration book. <laughs> so I did that and here. And that's as far as I am in this book. Now, so then recently I had already bought these bigger books and, and the interesting thing was for me that I bought them and I thought I would love working in them and for a very long time I didn't. Mostly because they took me forever. <laughs> so I'll show you. So I started first working on the, this is the very first spread and I absolutely do find I really love this page but it took me forever to, to finish so I kind of didn't normally in one I like uh, f finding some closure with a, a spread, if I can, in one setting, and I found that with this journal, that with this journal, it was so big that I couldn't find that closure. So, so then I would lose the connection with the spread the next day or a week later, and then I wouldn't finish it. So for a long time, I didn't like working this large. Like so, these two pages, this first one and the second one, were the only pages I'd done for a very long time. I hardly. I was hardly interested in continuing on because basically, like I said, I just kept losing connection with the with the pages because I couldn't find a finish or close. So I have a closing kind of <laughs> thing with them, and I find again even with larger paint. That's why I have I struggle with canvas as well because I lose connection with paintings if I don't do it in the one sitting. But I will go back to them. But it's interesting because I'm I find it interesting because I'm in a frame of mind or in a mood and I want to kind of finish whatever that is. And if I can't, then I find it hard to get back to them. So, however, so having said that, I then wanted to come back to to um, these pages. And I the first page, the first spread I did, I did, really didn't enjoy. Look, I, I, I this is way too acrylicy. I don't know if you can see that. So I use mostly acrylic. I did some collage, and I mean, this I didn't finish. This is not not no, but nowhere finished, and I don't think it will be finished because I just couldn't connect with this at all. And that was because I went way too heavy on the acrylics. When I only use acrylics, I lose connection. I can't. It's too plasticky for me. I need to have a porous type of uh, yeah paint mostly, so that I can layer through and see through and stuff like that. I find it quite hard if, if the acrylics such anyway, acrylics is too dense for me sometimes. If I love using it but not as the sole mixed media thing. So then knowing that I came to using uh, doing less of that and going back to my beloved sort of more water based media and I I kept coming back to these pages and starting to really love it and I had a real long session uh, in, in this with this spread and I really enjoyed what was happening though this is all st still not finished but I'm not bothered by the fact that it's not finished yet so it's more or less finished and I can come back to it to finish it I would like that so what started happening for me was that I felt the urge or the need to work larger and do more faces and have that space to do kind of watery stuff and and play um, be very expressive in a kind of wider way that's why I wanted to come back to this larger journal um, and so what I like about working large um, as you've probably already surmised on what I've been saying before is that I can go far out I can go anywhere I'd like and create almost different landscapes within the same spread that still relate to each other but basically it's almost like I'm <laughs> it's a little bit like a a, um, a little duckling or something, or a little baby bird finally going out further from the nest, perhaps. Um, but it, you can still, I, I, I'm still creating that intimacy for myself in sort of smaller, but in many more sections. So symbolically for me, it, it looks like I'm, I've, I'm branching out, but creating more in like um, more isolated bits of intimacy for myself so I'll work on this bit here and I'm loving how that's going and then the face over there so so perhaps um, it feels to me like in when I work in a larger journal I have more space almost to become intimate more deeply with whatever's going on for myself and also be playful and dare to step further out so uh, working big allows me or encourages me to be sort of courageous and brave and try out newer and different things. I suppose that's why I'm attracted currently to working larger. And and this is all I do currently. I keep coming back to these pages. So like what I like, like you, it would be really hard pressed. You could do it, but it's harder to put and a face and a phoenix and all this stuff in a in a, in a smaller journal. You see, you could all obviously do it. You just make it all smaller. But I here you have the freedom, and you can kind of try out things and overlap it. So I enjoy the freedom that larger 
journals provide for you or for one. So yeah. And here, and so this one felt pretty finished and I managed to do that in one sitting and I really loved it. And it, this one, for instance, is in an interesting thread because to me it feels finished, though it isn't finished. Like there's a lot and like there's a lot of writing here and it's not covered. It does not that that's the name, but this page by itself wouldn't feel finished to me, but I absolutely love it as a counterpoint to that page there. So so I also have the space I also have the space in, when I work larger to kind of work with um, negative space, i.e. leaving sessions white and leave them almost untouched. <clears throat> this uh, wasn't finished, I really didn't enjoy how uh, this face came out, so I kind of let it be, I, I left, or I let go of it. And then here, this is again an interesting thing, the other cool thing about this kind of pages is that even when they're unfinished, they feel finished. So, okay, that sounds so contradictory, but what I mean is the I worked a lot on this face and I really liked where it was going and I kind of fo focused on it and finished it and then this feels kind of not quite finished but because this is finished it works kind of well together so again it's that negative space and letting things be so I find that in larger spaces I have much more um, basically I have a lot of freedom to experiment with with other ideas and other concepts while in the smaller places I feel almost a little bit more in jour smaller journals I feel a little bit more limited and constricted to <clears throat> how I work and of course that is all very personal so I'm just talking about myself here you, you, it might be very different for everyone else involved so I'm not saying this is how it is for everyone <laughs> I'm just explaining to you how it is for me and, and maybe it stirs something in you so here's the new quirky bird that I really enjoyed working on. Here I started sketching some animals and things. And then these are not finished and I kind of haven't come back. I haven't had time. So we're nearly actually near the end today of of um, of, of, of this journal because there's not this is not finished. I was a bit un frustrated with where this was going. There's not, you know, but I could come back to it or not. And then same story here, I was a bit frustrated with this. Slightly, again, slightly too much acrylics. As soon as I bring in too much acrylics, it starts to frustrate me. Color scheme wasn't quite working for me here, but I can come back all to all this and continue working. Then I, this, today I'm showing you how I made this page, this, um, these to this spread, and I really enjoyed making this spread. It's very similar to, um, uh, sorry, so similar or based around this one. Uh, and a lesson that I recently did for Lifebook. Um, hold on, where is it? Sorry, I'm just getting those pages. They were loose pages. Okay. This one, this one. Sorry. Show you. So I did this. This, these two pages. This is a spread that I did for my Lifebook lesson in March. Um, and it's sort of very similar to this, although different again. Very, this is a different look. This is a different face. Uh, anyway, all kinds. But I, I was very happy with this. This love. I love making these kind of crazy, lots of busy, but also layers. Oh, uh, meaningful things for me in here. Lots of meaning in this uh, spread for me. And had a very uh, nice closure. A lot of people said uh, when they saw this on Instagram that they thought it looked like me, which I thought it was amazing because wasn't it not intended? I can see it sort of. Um, but yeah, this was a very, very important spread for me to make. So I'm pleased that uh, I filmed the process for you today. Not today, I've filmed it before, but I can show you the process today because it's pretty um, special and interesting, I think, for you guys. So yeah, so yeah, so. Um, I love working large at the moment. I'm also I work on canvases, but um, I never really put those on YouTube. I'm gonna I'm thinking of um, doing a, a canvas uh, video for you guys soon, so you can see me create a canvas. Because um, I come and come and I go I come sorry I go and come when it comes to canvases, and that's just because I think there's a big thing for me, which is around needing closure in the session so if I start canvas and canvas is large I would need to work on a whole day and I can't I only sort of allocate two three four hours at a time for painting sessions because I have work and children and other things so I think I lose connection with the pa some of the canvases larger canvases I do but I'm hoping to be able to make more space in my future for let's say a full day of only painting like that was amazing right <laughs> um, and then do canvases and maybe film film the process for you guys and you can see how I work on canvas if you're interested in that. Okay, so anyway, I hope this was a kind of interesting look into my 
larger and different sized journals and maybe it'll inspire you to uh, maybe start look at look at the sizes you work in and consider consider working in different sizes or why you work in the size that you do what you can set yourself a challenge as or even make your own journal it's not that difficult and um, yeah I hope it helps you further in your creative journey so thanks for um, watching this video today I hope they hope you enjoy the next uh, session and um, you know very welcome to come and check out my website www.willong.org to see if there's any courses there that you might find interesting all right, lovely people, enjoy the next section, and until next time, bye!